Studios, and I'm one of the people working on Smite 2's matchmaking system. With Smite 2, we've been hard at work to make the entire matchmaking system. Max is also a great follow on Twitter, um, Innocent Rabbit. If you don't, the, he puts out so much data about Smite 1 and Smite 2. A lot of times he takes some feedback and garners interest too on Twitter. So Strict improvement over Smite 1. The way that we're trying to do that is simple. There's been over a decade since Smite 1 launched, and in that time, there's been more research into matchmaking systems and statistics. There's been over a decade of feedback that we've collected on our matchmaking system. Sheesh. And we're trying to incorporate all of that crazy. to create a strictly improved system that also has a bit of creativity in its design to specifically address the needs yes. of Smite. The first one is that we've completely overhauled the role preference system. In Smite 2, players will have the ability to rank the roles 1 through 5. That way, we have a more informed look of w? what players want, maybe more importantly, don't want to play. We anticipate that this system will have a huge impact on letting players play their most preferred roles more often, and almost more importantly, play their least preferred roles way less often. And speaking of roles, we have a brand new style of matchmaking that we're looking to implement in Spite 2. In traditional matchmaking systems, a player is given a single primary skill value. This primary skill value was effective for the first games that matchmaking systems were made for, shooter games. But for a MOBA, we found that this is a little too simplistic. So instead, we've introduced a system that we call MOBA-specific matchmaking, or role-aware matchmaking. The way that this system works is that it treats the players as the complex individuals they are with one primary skill rating, and then a vast array of ratings depending on the roles that they play and their skill at those specific roles. Then Yo. we use those role-specific ratings to inform our matchmaking. Looking back at Smite 1, we had a lot of matchups that seemed fine on paper. However, when we ran our new system against it, we found that those matchups were actually highly mismatched because a player of way higher skill level was matched up in the solo lane against a player of much lower skill level. This one mismatch can really throw off an entire game, and we're trying our best to improve that for Smite 2. There's already an initial pass on a system that backfills players Myth one that don't connect to the God Select screen. This is a lobby that would have crashed in Smite 1 that we now seamlessly remake in Smite 2. It's my personal opinion that matchmaking is the most important out of game system to a game like Smite. It directly shapes the games that players get placed in and the experience that they have. And I'm excited to see what we can do with this new, responsive system in Smite 2, and I can't wait to see where it goes over the next few years. I'll see you on the battleground. All right, that is so sick. That is so sick. Such a good change. That's really cool. I'm also shit at solo. I'm better. I'm, I'm like, I am a passable, probably like gold plat ADC, and then everything else I fucking suck. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> everything else I suck at. <laughs> People lie about their role MMR. <laughs> That's so true. Dude, I'm telling you, I'm like 17... I'm 17,000 ADC MMR. It's my solo MMR that's bad. I, I'm telling you, it's everything else is good. Yeah, we're yapping. We just watch the uh, the matchmaking. I, I think that's such a good change, though. I love both of those things combined, too, because if you're ranking things one through five, and the matchmaking is taking that into account. And it's taking your skill and a role into account. If I put solo as fifth and I suck at solo, in theory, I should just never get solo. The game should do anything in its power to not give me solo. That's fucking awesome. I've been saying that for a while, Poseidon. It's funny you say that. They gave so many hints and so much information about a lot of stuff at Worlds. Esports, too, in particular was one that I think a lot of people just didn't pay attention to, <laughs> where they gave a lot of hints and a lot of information. And people were like, well, we got no information on esports. And, and and we did. I don't know if you guys saw on Twitter, but Hindu, both Hindu Man and Cooper tweeted that news is coming soon. Uh, Cooper tweeted that the Vegas land will be double elimination. Also, there was the two lands, which I'm, I'm, sh I'm sure some of you have seen this, but if you haven't, there was confirmation that there was an EU land and it got canceled because the place that was going to host it went under and they didn't have a replacement in time. So that would have been two. It would have been an EU land, the Vegas land. So 
everything they said for the most part has been coming true to slightly different dates. So I think if people had paid more attention, or not even paid more attention, but if people had just kind of locked in a bit more on what was said, there could have been some better stuff.